In late 2009, Australia was in the grip of the Millennium Drought, one of the most severe and prolonged droughts in its recorded history. Lasting from 1997 to 2009, this drought had left vast regions of southeastern Australia, including New South Wales, Victoria, Queensland and South Australia, parched and vulnerable. Millions of tonnes of topsoil lay exposed, waiting for the slightest provocation to be lifted into the atmosphere. On the 22nd of September 2009, that provocation arrived in the form of a powerful cold front, colliding with an intense low pressure system over the continent's interior. The winds unleashed by this turbulent weather system surged across the drought ravaged landscape particularly the remote regions of far western New South Wales, northeastern South Australia, and Queensland's Channel Country. Here, vast lake beds and inland river systems, including Australia's largest salt lake, Lake Eyre, had dried completely, leaving behind fragile, powdery clay and fine silt. These winds, gusting at over 100 km per hour, swept up an enormous plume of dry soil, propelling it high into the unstable atmosphere. What began as swirling dust clouds rapidly grew into one of Australia's most intense and unforgettable dust storms. This is the story of the Red Dawn Dust Storm. We have partnered with Geology to bring you this sponsored video, and I'm genuinely excited about it because this has completely transformed my skincare routine. Rocks might look better with age, but unfortunately our skin doesn't always share that trait. If you're anything like me, finding the right skincare routine can feel complicated and overwhelming. Whether your concerns are acne, wrinkles, dark spots, or just overall skin health, everyone's skincare needs are unique. Thankfully, Geology simplifies this entire process. You start by taking a quick 60 second diagnostic quiz, where you share your specific skincare goals. From there, Geology's expert dermatologists design a personalized skincare routine tailored exactly to your needs and ship it right to your doorstep. I've been using Geology's anti-aging products consistently, and the results genuinely surprised me. The everyday face wash, with refreshing ingredients like bergamot and juniper, cleanses deeply without drying out my skin. The night cream, which contains powerful anti-aging ingredients like retinol and hyaluronic acid, noticeably reduced fine lines and made my skin smoother and healthier. Paired with the moisturizing morning cream with SPF 15, my skin stays hydrated and protected all day long, never feeling greasy. Geology emphasizes simple, effective ingredients that a dermatologist approved, making my skincare routine easy and stress-free. Another thing that impressed me is Geology's commitment to quality. They have earned an impressive 41 grooming awards from prestigious outlets like Men's Health, Esquire, and Oprah Daily. Plus, with over 10,000 five-star reviews, it's clear that Geology delivers real, visible results. The best part? Right now, Geology is offering an incredible deal you can get 70% off your personalized skincare trial set. That's an entire month of custom skincare for just $12. On top of that, you'll receive a free gift and up to 50% off add-ons. Believe me, your skin will thank you. Stop wasting time and money on products that don't deliver. Click my link and use my code in the description to grab this amazing offer from Geology today. Your journey to healthier, happier skin is just a few clicks away. When the dust storm started, Meteorologists described the conditions as extraordinary. As the cold front pushed eastward on the 22nd of September 2009, winds gusting up to 100 km per hour tore across the deserts. The normally clear outback skies turned hazy brown. By that afternoon, satellites observed a great plume of dust aloft, stretching hundreds of kilometers. This was the genesis of the event. The first places to witness the dust storm's fury were in the country's interior. In the early afternoon, residents of Broken Hill, a mining town in far west New South Wales, saw the sky turn from blue to eerie dark ochre. By 3.30pm, Broken Hill was blacked out by a wall of dust so thick that daylight had nearly disappeared. At least one mine halted operations as visibility plunged. Similar scenes played out in other outback towns. Windora, in southwest Queensland, reported heavily dust-laden air that morning and Cowra, in central New South Wales, saw the ominous haze later in the day. The storm was on the move, riding the cold front toward Australia's densely populated east coast. As evening fell on the 22nd, the dust cloud expanded in size and intensity. Fueled by strong winds, it gathered more red soil from drought-stricken paddocks in its path. 
By night, the storm front measured roughly 500 kilometers wide and over 1,000 kilometers long, spanning much of western New South Wales and Queensland. People in these regions hunkered down as winds howled and fine dust seeped into homes. Few could imagine what the next dawn would bring to the cities further east. Daybreak on the 23rd of September, 2009, revealed an apocalyptic scene in Australia's largest city. Sydney siders woke up to a portentous orange glowing sky that many likened to a Martian landscape. An enormous red dust cloud had descended upon the city before sunrise, carried overnight from the interior. Iconic landmarks like the Opera House and Harbour Bridge were cloaked in an ethereal orange-red haze, barely visible through the swirling dust. Sydney Harbour itself looked as if it had been filled with rust. It did feel like Armageddon, one resident recalled, describing the red glow that filtered through a skylight. Others said it was as if the world was ending, a scene straight out of a science fiction film. By mid-morning, Sydney's air pollution had skyrocketed to unheard of levels. The plume over the city was so dense that air quality instruments maxed out. Particle concentrations reached around 15,000 micrograms per cubic meter, compared to a normal day's 10 to 20. Overall pollution was measured at 1,500 times the normal level, making it the most polluted day on record for the city. The Bureau of Meteorology declared it the worst dust storm in New South Wales in nearly 70 years. Visibility in Sydney dropped to as low as 400 meters and a fine layer of red grit blanketed streets and buildings. Sunlight was dimmed to a ruddy twilight. Temperatures fell noticeably under the pool of dust, an effect some compared to a nuclear winter chill. The immediate impact on daily life was chaotic. Commuters found their cars coated in red powder, and drivers had to turn on headlights in what should have been broad daylight. Public transportation was disrupted as well. Ferry services across Sydney Harbour were suspended due to near zero visibility. On the roads, a major traffic tunnel, the M5 East, was temporarily closed when dust infiltrated its ventilation system. Construction sites across the city shut down operations. Many schools kept children indoors, or even sent them home, as a precaution against the thick dust in the air. Face masks sold out rapidly. Pharmacies and hardware stores reported mask sales higher than even during the recent swine flu pandemic. We are seeing earth, wind and fire together, remarked one weather presenter, highlighting the unprecedented combination of elements assaulting the city. While Sydney grappled with its red dawn, the dust storm was not confined to that city. The gargantuan plume continued moving north and east, spreading fine red dust across Queensland and beyond. By late morning on the 23rd of September, areas hundreds of kilometres up the coast were enveloped. The New South Wales mid-north coast saw conditions deteriorate. In Coffs Harbour, visibility fell to 500 metres, forcing the airport to close for hours. Further north, the haze reached Brisbane and the Gold Coast around midday. The normally blue skies of Queensland's southeast turned a muted orange-brown. In Toowoomba and Ipswich, west of Brisbane, visibility was reportedly under 100 metres at the storm's peak. On the Gold Coast's famous beaches, an otherworldly scene unfolded as surf and palm trees faded into a copper-coloured gloom. Beachgoers were warned not to swim unless in patrolled areas, since lifeguards' views were obscured. Despite the surreal skies, Queensland's impacts, while significant, were slightly less disruptive than Sydney's. Brisbane Airport managed to remain open with only minor delays, as the dust there was not quite as thick. However, in the Gold Coast region, the dust storm still caused considerable disturbance. Construction work paused due to air quality concerns, and power lines were knocked down in some spots by the vigorous winds carrying the dust. The observation deck of the Q1 skyscraper, the sky point on the Gold Coast, was closed to visitors as the panoramic view had vanished into the haze. Emergency crews in southeast Queensland even had to rescue two fishermen lost off the coast of Stradbroke Island when the dusty air and rough seas complicated navigation. By the evening of the 23rd of September, the massive dust cloud had travelled further north into central and north Queensland, thinning as it went. Towns such as Rockhampton, Townsville and Cairns experienced a dusty haze and brilliant red sunsets, though visibility there ranged from 7 kilometres down to 50 metres in patches. Commercial flights in these northern areas were generally not disrupted as the dust had dispersed significantly by the time it arrived. 
Still, residents as far as 2,000 kilometers from the storm's origin witnessed an unusual film of red dust settling on cars and gardens. On the 24th of September, 2009, the main dust plume finally began to dissipate over the Tasman Sea, east of Australia. By this stage, the clouds stretched an astonishing distance. Analysis of NASA satellite data showed the dusty veil extended about 3,450 kilometers from northern Australia, Cape York, to its southernmost limits. In fact, a NASA Terra satellite image captured on the 23rd of September revealed a continuous wall of dust spanning the length of eastern Australia, from northern Queensland down to the Victorian border. The brown smudge was so vast it was clearly visible from space, obscuring the land beneath. Winds aloft carried the remaining dust eastward over the ocean. By the morning of the 25th of September, traces of Australia's red dust were falling on New Zealand. A thin layer of orange powder settled on surfaces in Auckland and other parts of the North Island. Atmospheric monitoring in New Zealand confirmed the arrival of the dust in the air, coinciding with a frontal passage that brought an eerie tint to the sunrise. Some of the dust even reached as far as the Chatham Islands and was detected in the skies over New Caledonia in the days that followed, showing the insane extent of this event. The Red Dawn dust storm had immediate and wide-ranging impacts on public health, transportation and infrastructure. As red grit filled the air, emergency services were inundated with calls. In Sydney alone, over 500 calls poured into fire departments between 3am and 7am, as countless smoke alarms were triggered by the fine dust particles invading homes and buildings. By midday on the 23rd of September, New South Wales Ambulance Services had responded to more than 250 emergency calls for individuals suffering breathing difficulties. Hospitals and clinics reported a spike in patients with asthma attacks and respiratory problems. Many people, especially the elderly and those with lung conditions, were struggling in the hazardous air. Health officials urgently warned residents to stay indoors, avoid strenuous exercise, and wear masks if available. Dozens of people were treated for asthma exacerbations, though thankfully, no fatalities were directly attributed to the dust cloud. The tiny particles even left an oddly metallic taste in people's mouths and a layer of grit on their teeth after walking outside. Following the event, cleanup began almost immediately. Street sweepers and household brooms battled the film of red dirt that settled on every exposed surface once the skies cleared. The economic impact was substantial. In New South Wales alone, the cleanup cost from washing cars to cleaning ventilation systems and homes was later estimated at around $299 million. For farmers in the interior, the storm's toll was heartbreaking. An estimated 16 million tonnes of topsoil had been stripped from the land and carried away, representing a significant loss of nutrients and productivity for already drought-hit farms. For weeks afterward, vacuum cleaner bags and air conditioner filters in Sydney turned orange from all the residue. Yet beyond all the inconvenience lay an environmental footprint that scientists eagerly studied. The CSIRO calculated that during the peak of the storm, 75,000 tonnes of dust per hour were being dumped into the Tasman Sea off the New South Wales coast. In total, about 2.5 million tonnes of Australian sediment ended up in the Pacific Ocean, making Red Dawn the largest single loss of soil on record for the continent. Interestingly, the dump dust had some unexpected consequences. Scientists observed that the infusion of mineral-rich dust into the ocean sparked a phytoplankton bloom in the Tasman Sea. The iron and nutrients in the soil acted as a fertilizer for marine algae. In the weeks after Red Dawn, satellite imagery showed higher chlorophyll levels in parts of the ocean downwind of Australia, a biological response to the dust deposition. This finding was significant, demonstrating how events like dust storms can link land and sea ecosystems in surprising ways. However, any ecological silver lining at sea was small comfort to farmers who lost precious topsoil. For them, it would take years to recover what blew away in one day. Red Dawn was the most severe dust storm to hit eastern Australia in 70 years, and by some metrics, one of the largest ever documented in the world. It was a dramatic finale to over a decade of drought, literally casting a red shadow over millions of people for a brief moment. In a matter of 36 hours, the storm travelled roughly 1,500 kilometres from the outback to the ocean, blanketing cities and even reaching distant lands. Today, Australians still recall the day dawn broke red, 
and a thin layer of their homeland that fell from the sky. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.